Hi. My name is Francois Donzi. One, I'm a technical consultant at HPE and today I'll have the pleasure to present several Redfish client tools that can be used to manage your servers. Before explaining the details of those tools, I'll introduce briefly the Redfish standard. Then, I'll present two very useful Redfish simulators. One from HPE and one from the Distributed Management Task Force, the standard organization who created Redfish. Following the Redfish simulators, I'll review some generic API environments like Postman and Visual Studio extensions. Command line tools will be also presented like Curl, ILRS and others from the DMTF. Lastly, you'll learn how you can use PowerShell, Python and Ansible scripting languages. But what is Redfish? As said previously, Redfish is a standard from the DMTF, the Distributed Management Task Force. The DMTF publishes other well-known standards like WebM, SIM, the Common Information Model, SMBIOS and several others. Redfish has been designed to deliver simple and secure management for the software-defined data center. It is essentially a replacement of IPMI, the Intelligent Platform Management Interface. The foundations of the Redfish client server model are JSON, the JavaScript object notation, and the secure HTTP protocol. HPE implements a Redfish service in many hardware and software products like ILO-based servers, Superdome Flex, Aruba devices, PDUs or the ILO amplifier pack. Redfish is a very powerful flexible and dynamic standard adopted by a lot of IT players. However, if you decide to use it for managing your infrastructure, it is important to never assume the location of resources in the Redfish tree. To better understand this best practice, read the blogs and perform the Redfish API 101 workshop on demand accessible from the HPE developer portal. Let's now introduce two Redfish simulators. The first one is the public web-based ILO RESTful API Explorer. From its graphical user interface, you can select a type of server and then perform GET requests. However, it is not possible to perform actions or modify resources in those simulated servers. This simulator can be used to learn and understand how Redfish models and represents the listed servers. You can as well use it to verify and validate the existence of a particular resource. The DMTF proposes a Redfish mockup creator and a server simulator on its public GitHub page. To use them, you first capture the entire Redfish tree of a real server in text format with the mockup creator. Then, using the Redfish server, you can query the mockup you just created as if it were a real server. Get requests to this simulator get the same responses as if it were sent to a real server. However, when you send an action or a resource modification, the DMTF mockup server performs very minimal verification compared to a real system. Hence, you may not get the same response as a real system. This is an illustration of a captured Redfish mockup by the DMTF mockup creator. The left picture shows the content of a Linux folder representing the typical root Redfish endpoint, slash Redfish v1. This folder contains an index.json file as well as a subfolder for each Redfish root service. You can see that the account service and chassis folders present in the left screenshot are also mentioned at the same location in the index.json file shown the right hand picture. Let's now review some tools that you can use against real or simulated Redfish services. The first generic API tool of this list is my favorite, is called Postman. Postman is a very powerful collaborative application, even in its free version. Its rich graphical user interface seems a little bit complex at the beginning but you'll like it after a while. It offers the possibility to create collections of HTTPS requests and play them against predefined environment. I personally like the possibility to generate the corresponding code snippets of the requests in several languages like PowerShell, Python, Curl and many others. 
Microsoft Visual Studio Code offers several extensions that can be used as a Redfish client. One of the most popular is the Rust client. It contains a curl command generator as well an editor being able to validate a JSON syntax. Like Postman, you can use this extension to learn Redfish, validate requests or debug existing scripts or programs. Browsers have as well REST client extensions. The advanced REST client used to be a Google Chrome extension but it is now a standalone application supported by many operating systems. It has less features than Postman or the Visual Studio Code extension presented earlier, but it is sufficient to verify or validate quickly simple Redfish requests. If the generic REST API tools just described does not fit entirely your needs, here are some command line tools. Curl is a self-contained executable available by default on Linux distributions and on Microsoft Windows WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, or MOBA X Term, which is a SIGWIN subsystem. Curl is very powerful and is a good Redfish client for learning Redfish, quickly validating requests before scripting and for troubleshooting scripts or programs. Writing scripts with Curl is of course possible but very rapidly. You will need a JSON parser to extract only the properties you want from the Redfish service responses. The JSON query tool, JQ, can be used as a companion to curl. The DMTF provides on its public GitHub site, a Python-oriented command line tool called Redfish Tool. This is a generic Redfish client that can be used against any Redfish implementation and using an IPMI-like syntax. In addition to GET and SET operations, the Redfish tool offers raw commands, raw GET, raw PUT, raw POST, very useful to understand how things work or troubleshoot your scripts. The Redfish tool is very helpful for performing simple operations like power on power off and for retrieving information from the first levels of the Redfish tree. However, it is more difficult to extract specific OEM extensions located deeper in the Redfish tree. As the sources of the Redfish tool are public, you can study them and learn how the DMTF crawls the Redfish tree without assuming the specific location of resources and thus become agnostic to the remote Redfish service implementation. The Tackle Box is a public set of tools also provided by the DMTF. Those tools can perform actions or retrieve information against any remote Redfish compliant service. Like the Redfish tool, you can study the sources of different utilities provided in the tackle box to learn Redfish programming best practices. HPE provides for free the ILRS tool. It is a Python tool that you can download from the HPE Support Center. The sources are posted on the HPE GitHub site. From there, you will find as well different packaging for different operating systems. ILRS has many advantages compared to other command line tools. As an example, it can be used for in-band management on ILO-based servers. This feature is helpful when you want to configure a server using a custom WinPE image or a custom Linux CD with Chef Puppet recipes. Note that ILRS is embedded in the HPE ESXi images and can be used from the hypervisor to manage your VMware infrastructure using its in-band or out-band features. In addition, ILRS is extensible and you can add your own commands as documented on GitHub, in the Hewlett Packard Python Redfish Utility GitHub repository. ILRS is the perfect tool for daily management tasks in a small or medium data center populated with HPE ILO based servers. However, it is not very well suited for Redfish services implementations in Moonshot Chassis, Superdome Flex, or Superdome 280 or Aruba devices. The ILO REST ecosystem is very rich with numerous YouTube videos and articles in the HPE Developer Portal. If you want to try it for free, from the bottom of the HPE Developer Portal you can register to the live ILO REST workshop and follow the instructions or use your own creativity. HPE provides as well an ILO REST and a Redfish Slack channel for questions and discussions.
ILRS and the DMTF tools are great but may not suit your needs, especially if you have to manage important heterogeneous data centers. In this section I'll introduce several script languages that can be used against Redfish services. The first scripting utility presented here is PowerShell and its native invoke web request command. Everything can be done with the invoke web request, but you will need to write your own code to parse arguments, send credentials, build headers, and body requests. In addition, you may be limited when it comes to write and maintain long-term scripts. Remember, Redfish schemas do change over time. Another possibility to use PowerShell for Redfish scripts is to use the HPE command lets published in the Microsoft Gallery. HPE proposes three command lets. The HPE BIOS command lets is an interface to the BIOS ROM based setup utility, RBSU. The HPE ILO command lets allows the configuration and the management of the HPE ILO subsystem. The HPE Redfish command lets can be an interesting companion for sending raw Redfish commands. The Python scripting language is very tied to Redfish as it was the primary language used at the very beginning of the Redfish journey. As such, the Redfish Python ecosystem is pretty rich with a good dynamicity. There are several Redfish Python libraries available. After presenting the built-in Python library, I'll briefly introduce the DMTF's Python Redfish library and the HPE Python iLorist library. Note that the HPE's iLorist library is a fork of the DMTF's Redfish library. As such, it cannot coexist in the same Python environment. The URL lib, build in Python library, is the equivalent of the invoke web request PowerShell command we presented earlier. The advantage of this built-in library is that you don't need to load it prior to use it, and you can use it for any purpose like discovering the Redfish architecture or writing production scripts. However, this foundation library is not very well suited if you want to implement the Redfish best practices and support multi-vendor or multi-generation Redfish services. Moreover, you will have to create your own code to manage the different types of authentication as well as error logging for each type of HTTP requests. The second Python library introduced in this presentation is the DMTF's Python Redfish library. From an historical point of view, the DMTF's Python Redfish library is a fork of two HPE internal projects called RIS, RIT Interface Services, and REST. Many references to those projects are visible in the GitHub sources of this library which purpose is to provide a Python Redfish class, offering all the needed methods for login logout and submitting HTTP requests. After the DMTF published the fork of HPE internal RIS and REST projects, HPE performed a fork of it and published it in its public Python iLorist library GitHub repository. Hence, both DMTF and HPE Redfish Python libraries contains a Redfish class. However, their content is different and cannot coexist in the same Python environment. In the details, scripts based upon the DMTF library require the import of a Redfish underscore client method from the Redfish class while programs using HPE's Redfish class require a Redfish client method. Ansible is the perfect tool for deployment and low-level management of medium and large Redfish-based infrastructures. In this section I'll introduce three different methods of using Ansible in a Redfish context. The first method is to use the Ansible URI module present by default in each and every Ansible infrastructure, including Ansible Tower and AWX. This module is the most generic module for interacting with web services. It is very easy to use and can leverage all the potential of Ansible. However, crawling the Redfish tree using with this module generates long scripts with a lot of new session creations, various verifications and error handling at each step of object discovery.
Another possible way of using Ansible for performing Redfish tasks is to use Ansible Galaxy. In its community.general collection, you will find three generic modules, Redfish Info, Redfish Command and Redfish Config. Each module contains a set of tasks for getting and setting Redfish properties. In addition to the online documentation, the DMTF proposes a set of playbooks examples using those modules in its Redfish Ansible Playbooks GitHub repository. You will find as well in this repository a methodology to extend those modules to OEM extensions. In addition to the DMTF Ansible Playbook examples, HPE posted as well several examples in its Ansible i Lorist role GitHub repository. This repository proposes three main categories of Ansible playbooks. The first one contains playbooks calling the ILRest command line tool. The second set of examples uses the Ansible Galaxy collection described earlier. The third one is based upon HPE Python modules derived from the examples of the Python ILORST library. By exploring those examples, you can compare them from a single location and decide which category is the best for your needs. HPE provides a rich Redfish ecosystem with numerous blogs, articles, videos and live workshops on demand. Moreover, HPE Point Next services can help you to implement a Redfish customized solution for your infrastructure. Just send them a mail. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.